This video is intended to be a guide for those getting their new electric scooter set up, tuned up, and ready to ride. There are some good tips and important things to know in this video, so it's worth a watch even if you've already had your scooter for some time. Setting up any scooter can be done with the multi-tool included with your scooter. But if by some chance you weren't sent a multi-tool, or you have your own tools and want to know what you will need, here are the tools required to set up your average scooter. Phillips head screwdriver, 5mm allen key, 4mm allen key, and a 3mm allen key. Let's start from the moment you pull the scooter out of the box. Most scooters will come with the handlebars disconnected, so getting those bolted on the scooter will be priority number one. Don't worry about messing too much with the stem lock, just get the stem up and locked enough to be able to install your handlebars. For most entry level scooters, you will be simply bolting the fixed handlebar to the top of the stem and calling it good. More expensive scooters will often require you to install the handlebars in a clamp. In this case, you'll have more freedom to dictate how you want your handlebars set up. However, unless you have a very specific handlebar setup that you like, you should generally install your handlebars with the rise of the handlebars up by the stem at a 90 degree angle. This will bring the height of the handlebars to the correct place and line up the back sweep of the handlebars correctly. Be sure to get the clamp tight enough so the handlebars don't slide around, but do not over tighten because doing so can crack your handlebars. This advice goes for everything that you tighten down on your handlebars too. Your handlebars and all the levers and things attached to your handlebars is known as your cockpit. Before setting up the rest of your cockpit, be sure to check your stem lock and make sure that it is tight and working correctly. There are many different types of stem locks, so it's impossible to cover all of them, but the key is making sure that your stem is locked upright tightly and that stem wiggle is minimized as much as possible. Take a look at the orientation of the handlebars compared to the wheel and make sure that they are perfectly perpendicular so that the steering is accurate and precise. You can loosen the handlebar clamp with these bolts here to correctly orient your bars. Once the stem is locked up and your handlebars are attached and lined up correctly, you can focus on adjusting the cockpit to your liking. This is where your personal preference may differ greatly from mine, but here's an overview of what I find most comfortable for me while riding. Let's start with the brake levers. I like to slide my brake levers further to the middle of my handlebars so my index and middle finger can do more of the heavy lifting when braking. If you have hydraulic disc brakes, you should set up your levers so that your index finger can get as much leverage as possible. Well-tuned hydraulic brakes shouldn't require more than a single finger to fully activate. But if you like braking with two fingers, then do as you please. I like to angle the brake levers down at a pretty steep angle because I'm taller and like a more natural angle for the brakes. Leaning the scooter against the wall and standing on it to position yourself as you would while riding will help you know the angle of the levers that feels most natural and comfortable to you. You can do the same to adjust your throttle as well. I lay my scooter throttle pretty flat because this too feels natural and comfortable for me. Too upright of a throttle can be very uncomfortable to use. Save your wrist and tilt your throttle further down. I promise you can still see the display while riding. Finally, be sure to tighten down any extra buttons, levers, or bells in the places you like them best. For example, I moved the included bell to a more natural place where I could reach it on this scooter. You may want things on different side of the handlebars, so don't be afraid to remove components and switch them over. Once everything is tight and in place, you can move on to other adjustments. Next, adjust your brakes so that they don't rub and so that the brake levers have a shorter pull distance. Start down at the calipers. Center the rotor between the brake pads by loosening these two bolts until the brake caliper wiggles and can move side to side. Then pull the corresponding brake lever and while keeping it held down, retighten the bolts. Loosening the small cable clamp and then moving it further up the cable will make the pull distance shorter on your brake levers and make them more responsive. Some calipers will have a small bolt that can make micro adjustments to the pull length of the levers. Once your brakes are dialed, perform a full check of the scooter to test for loose bolts or potentially inappropriately installed hardware and things like that. Also check the tire pressure to be sure the tires aren't over or under inflated. Under inflated tires risk pinch flats while over inflated tires decrease the amount of tire surface touching the ground, which in turn can decrease traction, stability and ride comfort. If you aren't familiar with how tires feel at certain PSI levels, be sure to use a gauge when adjusting tire pressure. 
you typically want to pump your tires up to around the 40 to 60 psi mark, but this could vary based on riding conditions and the scooter you own. The last thing to check and adjust before taking the scooter out to bed in the brakes is the adjustment of the P settings on your throttle display. If you are setting up a scooter without one of these throttle types, then you can skip to the next timestamp. P settings tell the controller how to operate the scooter based on the size of the motors, size of the battery, how quickly you want to accelerate, if you want to use kick to start, and other factors. If you want your scooter to work properly and display the accurate speed and distance you have traveled, you need to have these set up correctly. Most scooters will either come with the correct default P settings or with instructions on how to set them up. Double check that everything is set up by turning on your scooter, then holding both the power button and the mode button at the same time for a few seconds. Controllers that aren't already set up with this will ask for a passcode to access the P settings. There's a default code that you can find online based on your model number. Once you're in, you can either set up the P settings or double check that the factory set up the P settings correctly. I'll put a resource for the P setting adjustment in the description. I will go through the first couple settings on my Varla Eagle 1 as an example. After holding down the buttons for a few seconds, you'll get to the settings. Use the power button to scroll through the settings, and use the mode button to change the value of the P settings. The way you do this could be different for your model, so be sure to look up your specific model. On the Eagle 1, the first P setting slot, P1, changes the brightness of the display. In this case, I want that as 3. P2 changes between kilometers and miles. P3 changes the battery voltage setting, one of the things that you probably don't want to mess with if it's already set for you, and so on. Now that every pre-ride check and adjustment is taken care of, be sure to properly bed in your brakes. Bedding in brakes is the process of distributing brake pad material evenly on the rotor to maximize performance and help with avoiding pulsing and noisiness. Simply accelerate up to a decent speed then brake down to walking speed while applying even pressure to the lever. Make sure not to come to a complete stop while doing this. Accelerate and brake without stopping 10 to 20 times and your brakes will be good to go. Make sure that your scooter feels solid and ready to ride before taking it out and be sure to regularly check your scooter for loose bolts, damage, and other things that could cause the scooter to malfunction. Be sure to like this video if this guide was useful. Congrats on your new scooter and enjoy it! Be sure to subscribe for electric scooter content and I'll see you in the next video.